Good afternoon. So I'm going to talk about uh, a, a virus. Uh, a virus that I think is, is widespread and cuts across uh, gender uh, and class. And uh, it's mass phobia. It's a virus that, that is, is spread from family to family, from, from teachers to children, from children to children. I'm going to talk about what it looks like, my experiences of it, and how we can uh, put an end to it. I wonder, uh, first of all, if I, if I were to ask uh, people in the audience to turn to their neighbour and just quickly do this for us and uh, have a discussion for 10 seconds, uh, only 10 seconds, and then uh, come up on stage and talk about the answer. I wonder <laughs> what reaction, uh, I wonder what reaction you would you would have. I wonder. I think there'd be maybe three kind of reactions. The first reaction would be, and, it's, and it's, this is real, would be, yes, fantastic, we're doing maths. Maths and it's fractions. It's unbelievable, what a day. I've heard all these speakers now we're doing maths and it's fractions. That's unbelievable, what a fantastic day. Or you may be the, uh, and this one's quite common, the second type of person. You may think, And I'll get back, and hopefully by the time I get back, he will shut up or he got, will have got off, and I can relax again. Uh, and that little fear that's below the surface, just I keep locked away all the time uh, for, for situations, and I've got past it again, uh, and I'll be fine. Or you may be in the, the third category, the, the blood will drain from your face, will go to your uh, vital organs, and you will just fade. You just faint, maybe it'll be funny. Yeah, you just faint on the floor. And that'll be difficult sitting down, so you'd have to be quite a faint, and you have to slump forward and go sideways to be on the floor. Because there is a lot of this about. There's a lot of this about. So, as you heard from my introduction, I do uh, maths training in schools. And a lot of people, this is an interesting figure here two thirds of Americans fear and loathe. Uh, the figure is about a quarter of English people who uh, don't care for it much, but in, in America, they fear and loathe it. <laughs> and uh, you, you hear it a lot, and, you, and I see it a lot uh, in schools. Now, why, why am I talking about um, you know, what qualifies me? Well, what qualifies me really is the fact that uh, I was an Olymp Olympic standard <coughs> maths phobic. I mean, I could have been a maths phobic for England. Never mind about the hair. <laughs> My daughter looks at that and said, Why is your hair? I said, well, not laughing, oh, look at your hair, how ridiculous. You wash your hair like that, as if it was some sort of regulation, in the sense. <laughs> you had to be here like a Christmas decoration at my school, I've been got a cane. But I, I had no problem with number uh, at all, and, until a very certain definite point. Uh, those squiggly lines that were letters, those squiggly lines that were numbers, were, were, were fine by me, they were fine. Until uh, times table tests. Times table tests came along. Uh, and all of a sudden, things became a little bit anxious. Uh, anxiety started to raise its head, and, and I didn't have a start to have a comfortable relationship with maths. Now, this is a chenille tablecloth. It used to be curtains, apparently. It used to be a door curtain. And my mum used to keep this, this curtain, uh, stroke tablecloth, in, in the drawer. And it wasn't the food tablecloth. You know, we didn't have it for food. This was the special occasion tablecloth, uh, generally homework tablecloth. So this tablecloth would get wheeled out, usually within a two-week window of appearance. <laughs> and the tablecloth would get wheeled out and, and, and put on, and I would know, I'd say, it's, it's maths homework, because it was always maths homework. Now, the particular problem I had in, uh, in what is now year six uh, was long division. Now, I was taught long division by somebody standing at the front with a piece of chalk on a blackboard that's old man. Show me the algorithm, the method, or the written method, you might want to call it. And then say, right, now practice it 15 times. And I just, uh, it was just like another language. I had no idea what was going on. I had no conceptual understanding of this, of this method. And so, obviously, this got back to my parents. And then we'd have the tablecloth. The tablecloth would come out. And it would be, OK, so we're sitting very calmly, one parent there and me there. It's all for it's, it's fine. And, so we're putting this here, we're putting that line, and we're going to put this in. How many times are they going? Yeah, okay, fine. Now we're going to put this here, now we take this away. What, what, what? You, you, 
You take it away. Why are we taking it away? Because I told you we've got to see how many times it goes in. Then we put those there and they go up there. I don't understand why. Because I told you they've gone in now. We've got to take them away. And so it went on. And it really, really increased the anxiety and the phobia that I had for maths already uh, to, just to a new level. And I, and I um, but it's bizarre that I'm standing here talking to you about maths. And my, my career is about maths now. But I, I avoided long division without a calculator for the whole of my uh, school life. My whole school life, I managed to get past if there was a, if there was a point in school where I had to do long division. Because I was so ashamed, so ashamed of, of, of not being able to do it uh, and the anxiety, anxiety of it. Now, I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot. I go into schools or I do training in schools. And I'm often shown into a, into a place in a school by someone from the office. And uh, if, if they say, well, I'm, uh, I'm doing some training on maths, and they say, oh, I don't do maths. Oh, I don't do maths. Well, you, you don't do maths. What, you, you've got a house, you pay rent or a mortgage, you go shopping, you might have a car, you've got a bank account, but you don't do maths. What, what, what does that mean, I don't do maths? It is, and it's akin to, to parents saying to children and saying to parents even, oh, well, I was never any good at maths. So it's okay uh, for you. It's okay then to pass that on. But what's that about? What they're really saying is the virus. It's the virus putting up its shield. This is my view. The virus puts up its shield. Say you don't do maths, and then when you get asked to do maths, it's okay to get it wrong, because you've already said you don't do maths. And maybe they won't even ask you to do maths, because you've said... Now, I hear it in schools a lot. I hear it uh, an awful lot. But why maths? Where's the anxiety come from for maths? What, what, where does that originate? Why don't you have people with scarring geography experience? <laughs> you know, oh, I ain't a geography, and don't put me anywhere near any Oxbow Lakes. <laughs> oh, those meandering waterways, I hate them. Don't talk to me about them. Oh, I don't do geography. And similarly, you don't get that in, you know, in English. There's, there's time, there's luxuriant time to do things in English. You don't have people with terrifying experiences of Alfred Lord Tennyson and the Lady of Shalott, and oh, it brings me up in hives, that Lady of Shalott. It's <laughs> awful. What is it about maths? What do we do to children and then adults to, to cause this? Now, I think it's this idea. Uh, this is I, I believed this for a very long time. I believed this for a very long time, that I, I couldn't do maths. The people in my class at junior school, they uh, sat on their, their table where they did all the really exciting maths because they enjoyed it. They seemed to be laughing and enjoying themselves and, and thriving under the challenge. Well, I was sitting with my beta maths, maybe I don't remember speaking maths, sitting with my beta maths, ploughing through uh, endless, tedious maths, which you know, was, was, was awful. But there was no point really trying because I hadn't got the maths gene. I wasn't mathsy. I couldn't do maths. That was for the, the, uh, those, those guys, on, on the maths gods on the maths gods table. They did the maths. I couldn't do maths. Uh, and and this, this is pervasive. I think this idea of the gifted child with maths is pervasive. There was just a film recently called Gifted. You see it in the tabloids all the time about uh, people being gifted at something. It was as if it's a gene that, there, that, that exists. Well, clearly, I didn't have it. You know, that, I, I was obviously some sort of mutation because I didn't have that gene. But I also wondered if it was something else because my parents both... Um, went to school during the war. And, and they would regale me of stories of, if they didn't know their eight times table, being whacked over the hands of a ruler. Eight times eight, don't know, whacked over the hands of a ruler. So I thought, and because they were quite good with number, my friends, they were quite sharp, they were quite fluent with arithmetic. And I thought, well, maybe if, if, if only I was hit over the hand with a ruler, maybe I would be good at maths, and that's what the problem is. I'm not getting the proper education. I'm not getting the corporal punishment that I need. If only they would, if only they would hit me over the hands with a ruler, then maybe I would learn my tables or learn long division and all those things. Um, but, but now, fortunately, we, we, we're lucky to, in, in this enlightened age, to know about the ideas of fixed uh, and, and growth mindset. <coughs> And if you're not familiar with this, I'd urge you to go away and, and have a look at it. But uh, essentially, it's, it's a, a wonderful theory by Carl Dweck about uh, intelligence having you know, two perspectives. On the one hand, if you think that intelligence is fixed, is uh, innate, 
then you know you, you kind of can only go to a certain level. You can't go any further. And that's why I grew up believing with maths. I thought, you know, there's no point in me doing stuff because I can't do it. You know, I'm the maths gene. Or on the other hand, the, the growth mindset believes that actually, forget about smart and dumb. That doesn't exist. What exists is the attitude to learning and perseverance and resilience and trying again. You can't do it yet. So it's not about having, a, having an inbuilt uh, gene. Now, if I'd have known this in school, if someone had shown me this research that demonstrates that when we make mistakes, find, uh, synapses fire in our brain and create new pathways. So we need to make mistakes. It's no good getting a page of ticks uh, in, our, in our work in schools. We need to make mistakes. We need to actively encourage children to embrace mistakes and feel good about making mistakes, because that's actually where the learning is. Not in getting pages and pages of stuff right, you can already do. But I didn't have that. I had Robert the Bruce. When I was at school, all I ever heard about was Robert the Bruce. I don't know if you're familiar with Robert the Bruce. Robert the Bruce was a, a Scottish king who was uh, defeated by the English. And he was sitting in, uh, in, in his little cave. And he was thinking, uh, what should I do? Should I, should I carry on? Should I get an army together and try again? Or should I just go and eat haggis? Or... And he decided to, to, he was watching this spider in the corner of his room, and the spider kept on swinging and kept on swinging. And he came up with a magnificent phrase, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And that's all I ever heard. Try, try again. Try, try again. The problem was, I hadn't got the gene. I hadn't got the gene, so it didn't matter about trying again, because I hadn't got it. I couldn't do it. You know, there was, what was the point in trying again? Because I, I hadn't got the gene. There was no point. Absolutely no point at all. What we need to do, we need to slow down. Now, I know I'm a lone voice saying this. We need to slow down in our schools with maths. We need to slow down and take our foot off of the wind tunnel that we create when, when we talk about maths and we don't do it in geography, we don't do it uh, in English. We, you know, there isn't that time thing that, that what we value in, our, in maths is speed. And if you're, if you're fast, then you're a fabulous mathematician. Well, uh, no, actually, because there are lots of other things. It doesn't have to be all about speed. There's also all sorts of research that suggests that anxiety interferes with your working memory. And there's lots of very current research. Uh, there's this as well. This is Oh, well, it's disappeared. Uh, but basically, anxiety uh, interferes with manipulation of moments, which it gets in the way of, of working memory. And there's lots of recent studies to suggest that. So what, you know, if we know this, if we know that speed has an adverse effect, why is it you go into schools and, and, and teachers are praising children for being fast and, and, and everything is about speed? Think about that, because that's, that's prevalent uh, in a lot of places. I think, and this is my personal view, uh, that it, it harks back to our industrial age, our, our colonial past, where we needed uh, workers to, to churn out to work in factories and offices and all through the empire, I'm thinking sort of Bob Cratchit types, that, that needed to be fast and efficient. And we've still kind of got that as a hangover, that thing where, where maths, you know, we've got computers, we've got calculators, we don't, doesn't, there's lots of other things. If we know the anxiety, that starts with times tables, and the research suggests that's not just my experience, then let's think again about it, because we're turning off generations and generations of children uh, from uh, a wonderful, uh, exciting, beautiful subject. So my antidote, uh, the E's disappeared, but uh, my, my antidote is um, daily, daily mindset, a sort of daily dose of mindset in schools. To, to, for children to understand and to slow down. Let's think about being creative in maths. Let's think about the beauty in, of, of maths and, and the wonderful uh, exploration. And, and yes, it is difficult. And yes, it is hard. You may come up against um, dead ends. But, you know, that, that's what the nature of maths is. You know, it, it is a tricky subject. Children need to know that. They need to know. In this world of quick fixes and instant information of Google, they need to know that actually maths you're going to, you might go wrong a couple of times and make lots of mistakes, but you have to keep on. So let's make it fun and creative. Let's think about deep learning. Let's slow down. There's a lot of wonderful work going on already in schools with mastery uh, mathematics and, and all sorts of uh, new ideas that come to schools, but they're not widespread enough. We need to think about children going deeper with their learning so it stays with them. And also, you know, the other things that aren't speed. 
There are lots of other things in maths that are as equally as important. You know, you don't, I don't know of any sort of 20th century philosopher or thinker that, that is known for coming up with theories in two minutes. Yeah, they're brilliant. You know, they're, they're just, why not? Why, why have we created this thing in maths that, that speed is everything? Speed is the most important thing. Yes, it's important, but it's important along with everything else. Like working together, like um, organising, like looking for patterns, like generalising, like making mistakes, like going up blind alleys. All those things that, that are important, not just speed. Speed is a, is a, is a aspect, it's one aspect. So uh, together, take, take the antidote and I believe that we will kill the virus.